The building blocks of life, amino acids, have been found in meteorites. Evidence that life exists or had existed on Venus and Mars is getting more compelling every year. It's seeming more and more clear that the universe is teeming with life. So why don't we see evidence of alien civilizations when we look up to the stars? That is the Fermi Paradox. There are a lot of theories, but I believe I've found an extremely compelling answer to this riddle. We aren't looking in the right place. If you look out at the sky on a clear night, you will see thousands of stars with the naked eye. All these stars are part of the Milky Way galaxy. In total, there are a hundred million stars just in this region of space alone. Like all galaxies, we think there is a massive black hole at the center. Everything in the galaxy is revolving around this, including our sun and the solar system. The Milky Way is just one of trillions of other galaxies. These other galaxies are so far away that even the closest ones only appear as a amorphous haze to the naked eye, but powerful telescopes can peer into the stars that make up these distant neighbors. These areas of high concentration of stars are where scientists spend most of their time looking for alien life. This makes sense, it's the obvious place to look, but nothing has been found. As recently as 2019, a study of over a thousand of our closest neighbors here in the Milky Way galaxy showed no signs of life. In 2020, a different team of scientists looked at a different region of space containing nearly 10 million stars and, despite their best efforts, found no sign of life either. These numbers sound daunting, but only a minuscule portion of the sky was actually searched with these studies. Finding an alien civilization with this random approach would be like finding a needle in a haystack. A more directed search is required for results. And not only are the current search efforts random in nature, they are searching in an inherently inhospitable region of space. You may have heard of the Great Filter. This theory postulates that there is something that consistently destroys life forms before they have enough time to advance into an interstellarly detectable civilization. There's plenty of evidence of this too. Some consider it luck that life here on Earth has survived this long. Even something as mundane and unavoidable as our sun dragging Earth and the rest of the solar system through a giant cloud of space dust would be enough to strip away our atmosphere and render all life dead. More exotic means of extermination are just as likely and just as deadly. A nearby star going supernova would take us all out with it in its stellar explosion. The colliding of neutron stars anywhere in the galaxy could similarly wipe us out with a powerful gamma ray burst. Even more random and undetectable would be a directed gamma ray burst from the poles of a spinning black hole crossing our path. While none of these events are likely to occur in our lifetimes, given billions of years it is practically inevitable that we will face such a life-ending event. There's evidence to suggest that life here just barely survived a powerful gamma ray burst nearly 500 million years ago. The Sad conclusion to the Great Filter Theory is that there may be life out there in the galaxy, but it's likely just beginning or already dead. And here on Earth, we are living on borrowed time. But I think there's a way out. The classic way to combat this existential threat to Earth is to go out and colonize other star systems. Sure, this makes it harder for humans as a whole to go extinct, but it means we just have to accept the notion that any given planet, including Earth, are always at risk of total cosmic annihilation. And we haven't seen any evidence of alien civilizations expanding in this way. Instead of a needle in a haystack, a star colonizing civilization would be like searching for a cobweb in a barn. If existent, 
we should have found these civilizations already. Perhaps it's because there's a much safer, easier route of species survival. The existential threats to Earth are all caused by our proximity to other objects in the galaxy. Although the distance between stars is literally astronomic, we are in a relative star metropolis compared to the vast, vast majority of space. This space between galaxies is aptly called intergalactic space. If we put the resources of humanity to it, we may be able to reach intergalactic space before a galactic event takes us out. I'm not talking about giant spaceships and colonies either. I think the future of space travel will look a lot more familiar. You may have heard the metaphor that we are all astronauts here on Spaceship Earth on its voyage around the sun. A better metaphor might be that the entire solar system is our spaceship and the sun is our engine. Right now, our engine is just providing life support functionality, but it has the potential to do so much more. The Stellar Channel Kurskizarg introduced me to the notion of a stellar engine. The simplest form of this would be a ultralight mirror statically positioned on one side of the sun. The reflected radiation would cause a force imbalance, causing our sun to drift in a controlled direction. There are more advanced theoretical models as well, but even this relatively small continual acceleration can accumulate over time, eventually guiding our sun and the entire solar system with it out of the grasp of Milky Way's gravity and into intergalactic space. Here, we would be free from dust clouds and nearby gamma ray bursts. We would also be practically invisible to observers from inside galaxies. If they even thought to turn their telescopes up to the dark regions of intergalactic space, the pinprick of light from one star would be washed out in the light of all the galaxies behind it. Now, searching intergalactic space for a star with an advanced civilization controlling it is even more of a needle in a haystack than searching for stars with active life still in galaxies. But if this theory is true, it makes a bold, testable prediction. We should see stars with unusual trajectories, making a break for intergalactic space. This could be the last telltale sign an alien civilization gives before they are hidden to us forever. As of today, we found 30 such stars. Astronomers call them hypervelocity stars, and they were first discovered in 2005. These stars are traveling with enough speed that they will break the gravitational bounds to the Milky Way galaxy and continue onto the isolation of intergalactic space. The existence of these stars didn't shock scientists. Models show that it is possible for stars originating near the center of the galaxy to slingshot around the massive black hole there, causing the star to gain hypervelocity and eventually leave the galaxy. However, in March of 2019, a paper was published analyzing the trajectory of one hypervelocity star, LAMOST-HVS1. The conclusion? This star did not come from the center of the galaxy. It instead came from one of the spiral arms of the galaxy, a position similar to our sun's. This stunned scientists. The paper offers no solid conclusions on how this star achieved such a changed trajectory. It guesses that medium-sized black holes may be more common than we thought, and this star perhaps slingshotted around one of those. Of course, the idea of a stellar engine was never considered. If a stellar engine was indeed used here, the acceleration of the star has already changed sufficiently so it may be off and hard to find evidence of, but other signs of life may still be detectable. Currently, we don't even know if this star has planets. Let's call on astronomers to turn our most advanced radio telescopes to these stars and figure out any secrets they might hold. By focusing on these fleeing stars, 
we may be able to bring a magnet to our needle in a haystack search. Maybe, if we do find an alien civilization rushing to the safety of intergalactic space, it will unite us to achieve the same goal of harvesting our sun's energy to move us to safety. Because, as the evidence suggests, the universe is likely teeming with life, but also deadly forces. To survive and reach our full potential, we need to control our space in the universe. I'd really love to hear your thoughts, both positive and negative, about this theory. Is there anything I'm missing here, or is intergalactic space the obvious destination for any sufficiently advanced civilization? Please like and share this video, and for more content like this, please subscribe. And of course, thank you for watching Rather Be Squidding.